Hello friends, this video on comparing quantities part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this was all about discounts and tax and uh, VAT. Now we are going to talk something about your savings. Now we all work to earn and we also save maybe for our future needs or for our, for our old age needs. Now some of us save our money in banks, some of us save it in post office. But do you know what exactly happens in bank? Like, why do you prefer to save your money in bank or in post office compared to the piggy banks at home? Why don't you have the piggy banks at home where, you know, you just keep saving your money? Why don't we do that? Now, we do not do that primarily because of the interest. Because when you save your money in the bank, what happens? Over a period of time, for example, you kept rupees 10,000 in a bank. So let's say that you took rupees 10,000, which you could save maybe in a month or in a year, and you kept it in the bank. Now, after one year, so that 10,000 rupees is no more 10,000. So after one year, the money that you get back is rupees 11,000. Why? That's because when you keep this money inside the bank, the bank gives you some extra money. The bank gives you some interest. Now, why the bank gives interest? Because let's say that you are keeping this 10,000 rupees in the bank for one year. So for one year, bank can use that money in any way it wants. But, but just to compensate that, what it does, it gives you some extra money. So in this case, the bank gave you some 1000 rupees extra. But for you, it is a benefit. Had you kept this 10,000 rupees in your piggy bank inside in, in your home, then what would have happened? After one year also, your 10,000 will still remain as 10,000. It will not increase. But when we keep it in bank or post offices, your money increases primarily because you get some interest from the bank. So now we are going to talk more about this interest so that what are the different ways of uh, giving interest or how are these interest rates charged and how do we make the calculations related to interest. Now the concept of interest not only comes only when you are saving something in a bank or a post office. It also comes when you are borrowing money from the bank. Now, Many of you might have um, heard that people buy a house and if they do not have enough money to buy the house, what do they do? They take home loans from bank. When, uh, when people buy vehicles, they take vehicle loan from bank. If there is some personal need, you take personal loan from the bank. So what is this loan all about? So basically you write an application to the bank saying that, okay, I need, this is my monthly income and I need this much of money to buy a house. Now the bank will evaluate that, okay, if I give, since this person earns this much, so whether he will be capable to return my money or not, or the bank will basically judge that how much loan can be given to you depending upon your monthly salary. And then the bank gives you loan. Now, why the why does the bank give you loan so the bank must also be having some kind of benefit and that is why it is giving you loan so the benefit basically is that when you borrow some amount of money to the bank and then when you return it you return the money which you had taken plus some extra money so that extra money again is interest so in this case when the bank gives you money when the bank lends you money it lends you money because it knows that it will get some extra money in the form of interest so basically if you are taking rupees 100 from the bank maybe you have to return when you return it back you will have to pay rupees 120 now, these are just numbers. I'm just trying to tell you that where all interest plays a role. Now, when we talk about borrowing money from bank, there are a few terms which we use very often. So the amount of money that you actually borrow, that is termed as the principal. That is called the principal amount or just principal. So let's say that you borrowed rupees, uh, maybe 50,000 from the bank. So 50,000 is the principal. 
then you have something called interest this is the extra money to be paid by the borrower so you have taken 50000 from the bank but when it comes to you returning the money to the bank then you if you return only 50000 that is not enough you need to pay some extra money on top of 50000 so that extra money so you basically need to return the principal plus some extra money so that extra money is the interest now here we will actually see how do we calculate interest what are the various ways of calculating interest and the third thing is amount that is the total money to be paid back by the borrower so basically this principal plus interest this is together known as the amount so principal is the money which the person gets from the bank and amount is the money which the person returns to the bank so amount is basically principal plus interest so these are the three terms which are very commonly used when we talk about borrowing money from bank or when we talk about interests basically thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you